There's an interesting line on your website where you say that you draw on James C. Scott's legibility, mm -hmm. the idea that people or groups of people in a position of power make their subjects legible to them for the purposes of exploitation of resources via bureaucratic modernist procedures. What does this mean? Ah, uh, sure. So I think it's best to think about it through an example. And this just punched me in the face when I read the book the first time. So he was, don't skewer me, whoever's listening to this, uh, on the actual history and all that. I'm just going to pull one that I remember. I might get details wrong, but the overall point is that uh, I believe it was like, it's either 13th or 14th century Europe. And Scott was talking about how a lot of the nobles of England and France were looking at things like smallholder farms. Now, it's pretty difficult to tax smallholder farms because kind of like the Tanzanian example, they're all over the place. They're growing a little bit of fruit here. They have, they have a communal area for grazing their animals. They have any number of things that make it difficult for a person who's representing the state that's trying to tax them to do their job, right? And to do the job of saying, how much of that do you own? How much did you make? How much do you own the, grant, the state granary? Or, or, you know, for the purposes of like even going outside of resources or at least saying what the resources are. How many humans can you give us for military service or civil service? How much food did you produce that we can take a cut of and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, I think this legibility concept is really interesting, not because it's necessarily like an objective fact, but because it gives you an idea of the trade-off that's necessary for the stability that comes from centralization and centralized government, right? So Scott, in that example, ends up saying that basically what ended up happening was that nobles all actually had an incentive to keep the peasants on their land as illegible as possible. One of the first places where they were able to start to map plots was in their colonies, when they began centuries later to colonize places, because nobles knew that once your resources were clear to the king, it's very easy to tax you. So even back then, people were like, yeah, we need to keep our shit intentionally vague, right? And so this legibility idea then, when it came to the quote unquote new world at the time, you had things like cadastral mapping which basically was the first plots. Now, if you go, if you're in America and you're like, what is the, you can literally go to your local government and look up a cadastral map and it's just a map of everyone's property lines. And this literally makes the land that you sit on legible to the state so that they can very easily derive resources, make a surplus and execute actions that let them exert power over you, right? So this concept I think is actually eminently extensible to other domains, which is really what Wine Blog is about, is extending it into medicine. Because I read that book and I said, where's the section on medicine, <laughs> right? Like, because how the formalized bureaucratic procedures are developed in medicine that are then used to include or exclude people for a particular market in the pharma industrial complex, right? Uh, it's kind of a different bent of looking at the job of medicine, not as, you know, to heal or whatever the Hippocratic Oath is, but more to say, how do I find customers? How do I gain control of them? How do I make sure they have a way to pay me for the stuff I make? And how do I make sure the government says I can do this, right?